If someone offered you $10 million tomorrow, but you would lose your health, you would die the next day, would you take it? You wouldn't. Okay, so health is above money. If you were given $10 million, but you could not speak to your mom again, would you take it? No, okay, well, your health is above, your relationships are above, spirituality is above, there's so many things above financial pursuits. We all, at one point or another, are chasing that carrot, mm -hmm. whether it's a house or a Lamborghini or Ferrari. But what I've realized is that the true reward is who we become come in the process. A lot of what happens in our childhood tend to shape us and make us who we are today. Take the good, learn from the good, take the bad, learn from the bad, but we're not defined by those circumstances. Like they say, you take a millionaire, take everything away from him and put him in the middle of a city somewhere and in a yeah. few years come back and he'll be a millionaire again. A millionaire isn't defined by how many zeros he has in his bank account. He's defined by who he sees himself as or what he believes in. It's very, very good to be very specific about what it is that you want to achieve in life. And you'd be surprised if you write it down. I encourage your audience to do this. Write it down. Have a journal. Say, I will accomplish this. This is what I'd like to see take place in my life. And before you know it, later on in the years, you, you go back and you read it and it's there. You mentioned that the real victory in the pursuit of a goal is not the end goal, it's actually who you become yes. in that process. So when you are writing your goals down, are you looking towards characteristics or objectives? Having had a brush with death, I now realize that Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to uh, another episode. I'm joined by Vladimir. He's very graciously given given some time. And it's a very interesting story of um, usually I would reach out to a guest, someone I've had my eye on. I'll, I'll send them a message or an email or go through a friend of a friend. Um, but with yourself, it was we were in a hotel lobby. I'm washing my hands in the toilet. You're washing your hands. And I, I glance over at your watch. It's an amazing watch. Thank you. you threw a compliment back and we, and we got talking. Um, and as we were speaking, um, I not only enjoyed the conversation, I could see you were a very wise person. Just like now, before we started rolling, you have a lot of experience in life, I could tell. You mentioned you're considering writing a book, so I thought, okay, this could be a very interesting conversation. However, I have not much beyond that about yourself, so I'm here to also not only uh, learn from you, but also get to know you. So oh, thank this, you. Is, this is the first episode where I'm, I, I'm, I'm completely open. Yeah. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here with you and I am looking forward to learning as much from you as uh, from other people who I might have uh, the pleasure to meet as a consequence of this podcast. You mentioned my watch. This watch, I'm, I'm typically not a flashy person. This watch was a consequence of a near life and death experience, <laughs> you could say. Wow, okay. Um, when COVID came about, I got COVID. I got uh, sick and uh, the doctor said that it was pretty bad. I was about to, this was about two years ago, a mm. year and a half ago. And my birthday was coming up and uh, I got sick in December. And yep. I didn't know if I was going to make it or not. And one night I was there and I was very sick. And I was looking through Amazon. And I thought, you know, I don't know if I'm going to make it to my birthday. But I said, I'm going to buy myself something nice. And I saw this watch and I decided to buy it. And um, what's interesting is that because of this watch, now I met you. And a lot of things in life, we don't understand how things are going to turn out but life has a way of connecting people in, in the search of who we really are. Um, like you said, I'm, I'm writing a book. I've owned businesses. I own businesses now. We all, at one point or another, are chasing that carrot, I like to call it, whether it's a house or a a Lamborghini or Ferrari or whatever that carrot may be, we're all in the process of chasing that carrot. But what I've realized is that in the process of chasing the carrot, the true reward is who we become in the process. 
that's the true reward of life mm -hmm. because it's in the process that we get to discover who we really are all these layers start coming off who our parents wanted us to be who our friends told us we should be who society labels us to be and when we start understanding and getting to know our creator then we get to know what it is that we've been created for mm -hmm. and for example you mentioned my book when i was younger i grew up watching little kids without shoes and in very uh, dire circumstances so i thought that it would be a good thing for me to to do something about that And I began to read a lot of self-help books and books on success and so on and so forth. And I realized that there were a lot of themes that were very common amongst mm -hmm. those books and those teachings. They all talked about the same thing. So what I wanted to do is take all those concepts and put them in an easy-to-remember format. And that was the okay. ABCs. Okay. And so I put every one of those concepts into the ABC, uh, the alphabet. For example, A is Alpha, God. He's the beginning and he's the end. Even though he's eternal, mm -hmm. he doesn't have a beginning or an end. He's eternal. But he wants to be number one in our hearts, in our lives, in our businesses, in our families. And once we put him number one in our lives, everything else will fall into place. The letter B is believe. Believe that what we want to accomplish can actually come true. Mm -hmm. Believe that we're actually entitled to have it. Believe that we can accomplish those things, that they are ours, that our good Father in heaven wants us to have these things. Believe in ourselves. Too many times we grow up thinking or believing what other people have told us about ourselves and it affects our success in life. So that's the letter B. The letter C would be create. We are essentially the ones that get to create our reality. Mm -hmm. It's nobody else's responsibility. This is our story, our movie our book our canvas we get to choose the colors we get to choose uh the ending it's all up to us we get to create our reality it's nobody else's responsibility mm -hmm. so it it's a good thing because if we learn to visualize what it is that we really want to see happen in our lives we get to pick and choose and once we understand that it's in our hands to make these things come true, it, it makes life a lot easier. I can see you're very intentional with everything you do. The way you think, the way you speak, I, I can tell everything is considered. Have you always been very intentional in that way, in terms of spirituality and, and how you orientate your day, how you orientate with your interactions? Um, has faith something come to you in life or has it always, always been there? Well, when I was 18 years old, believe it or not, I was one of those kids that was very disillusioned with life and I was going to take my own life wow. for various reasons. My mother had been sick and uh, we had been doing very well up until then and then all of a sudden the world comes crumbling down on you mm -hmm. and wow. I didn't have a relationship with God. Like a lot of us, I had religion, I had church, but I didn't have a father, somebody I could reach out to. And when I did finally have that, he reached out to me like he does to a lot of us. And I took his hand and from that point on, he became my father. I grew up without a father. My dad died when I was young. So when he became my father, I began to learn from him. And uh, I surrounded myself with mentors, uh, older gentlemen that were very wise and that could teach me a lot. And I 
began to do the corporate thing. You know, I, I climbed the corporate ladder, had a lot of great positions in life. And of course, you, you get to acquire a lot of uh, business knowledge and mm -hmm. how to work your way through the corporate ladder. But now, uh, for example, in the book that I'm writing, I've narrowed it down to the letter F is um, there are five. It's faith, fitness, family, finances, and philanthropy. If you do those five things on a daily basis, a little bit towards each and every one of those things, you'll have a very successful life. You can't just do one of those five mm -hmm. or two of those five. If you do all of those five every day, just a little bit. And there's a um, philosophy in the Jewish culture that every morning when you wake up and you thank God for another day, it's really thanking him that he's giving you the opportunity or that he trusts you to come back into this world and do something positive towards your fellow human being. So a lot of cultures, they have this this uh, way of thinking, even the Eskimos, they believe that at night you die, per se, and every morning you live again. Mm -hmm. So every day is a new day. And if we live with intention every single day of our lives, instead of life just letting life happen to us, but us having an impact upon our own lives, then we get to create that reality and we get to do something positive like what I was telling you about uh, discovering who we really are, in the process of chasing that carrot, we will all discover that we have talents to give to this world. Uh, the letter U is universe or unique. Mm -hmm. When we think about the universe, this vast, unthinkable, unimaginable cosmos, and then we think about our little planet, this little dot in this vast emptiness of space. Mm -hmm. And then we think of a little me on this little dot in this universe. But we then realize that we're unique. We're the only version of us that will ever exist in the whole history of life millions of years, billions of people, there will never be another you. Right. And only you can offer to this world in this time that's been allotted to you, you have one thing that is unique that you can share with this generation that can have an impact in this generation. It can be a picture that you take, mm -hmm. it can be a story that you write, it can be a painting that you draw, uh, a speech that you write. You know, I just heard the other day that the uh, speech that Martin Luther King spoke about, I have a have dream, a dream. Yep. nobody wrote that for him. It came from his heart. That day mm -hmm. he was supposed to read another speech. Okay. And that day he said, no, I want to speak from my heart. And he spoke from his heart. And out came those words. And those words have inspired generations and changed the world. So here we are, little old me, little old you, in this vast universe. And we may think we have nothing to offer. But when you discover what your gifts are, and it can be anything from writing the song lyric, we know that. Songs can change a person, uh, yep. the course of a life. It can change even the course of a generation. Or it can be drawing something, you know, like uh, the happy face. You know, somebody came up with that. And it's impacted thousands upon thousands of people in emoticon or an application like WhatsApp or Facebook or something. I mean... You never really know what, what you have to contribute until you start discovering what your gifts are, your talents are. And instead of hiding them because you're afraid, um, like in the Bible when 
the the story that Jesus told about the talents and the gifts that he gave one one and another he gave a few more and he says I want you to do something with this and he, he left and came back and he said what have you done with what I gave you and one said well I was afraid and I didn't do anything with it mm-hmm. and uh, it was it was a sad thing to see because if he had really put it to work he would have seen impact and so us as well a lot of times we're shy or we're scared or or we're too caught up in the rat race you know we're too mm-hmm. caught up in trying to make uh, a living which is good i have a personal theory um maybe some would agree or some would disagree but i feel that in the day portion of our day the daylight maybe we should only allocate three hours of our day to the room and board per se the the roof over our heads, the clothes, mm-hmm. and our food, those should be their priorities. You know, we have a wife or we have kids. We need to take care of them. That's very good. But then the rest of the day, I think if we get to a point where we can say, all right, with three hours of my day, I, I'm able to take care of these uh, basic needs. Then the rest of my day, I can, I can uh, dedicate to my talents because those talents will open doors for you to kings. And I can uh, tell you that it's true. Um, Aside from my businesses, I sell gold and diamonds. And it's something that I started to do because I wanted to sell diamonds that were Mm conflict-free. I wanted to sell lab-grown diamonds. More than anything, to raise awareness of, of what's really going on in the world and give people an option to buy a diamond, a beautiful diamond for an engagement ring or, you know, wedding anniversary, pair of earrings or something, but that they would be conflict-free. I don't like to hear about these big companies exploiting these little kids, right? So in the process of uh, writing this book and sharing my gift with other people, uh, the other day I was sharing just in the lobby of a building, telling them about my book, and uh, all of a sudden they said, you know what, uh, let's stay in touch. And so I said, yeah, absolutely. And then one of my friends says, hey, you sell diamonds? I said, yeah. You sell gold? Yeah. And she says, well, my friend needs some gold. Oh, absolutely, I'll help you, whatever I can do. So then uh, I remembered that this guy I met at the lobby says, hey, I sell gold. Okay, well, my family has a gold business. I said, all right. So all of a sudden I started inquiring. Turns out that the uh, the young lady didn't just want a gold necklace. It was for a very, very prestigious customer that wanted to buy five 500 bars of gold. Oh, wow. And that's just to get started. Yeah. And so all of a sudden I'm, and it's a member of a royal family here in this area. And now all of a sudden I'm in the middle brokering a deal. This was Friday for 500 bars of gold wow. with a, a prince of a country and the owner of seven mines. And I'm in the middle sharing with them. And more than anything, what my goal is, is to be able to meet, uh, uh, people that are in position so that I can share my gift, the this book, with these people that have the ability to get it into the education system because it's good to go to school, absolutely. You learn to read, you learn to write, and that's necessary. You learn history, you learn culture, but... It, I see a big lack in learning the keys and the principles to success. Those we learn once we're outside in the real Mm -hmm. world. And the quicker I believe we learn these keys to success, the quicker that we will be able to bless other people. Has has your learning process of what are the keys to success usually coming from failure and, and learning from the lessons or is it more orientated around Uh, people above you that you see as mentors and and learning from others? You know, uh, I'm glad you asked that. 
I used to see failure as, you know, what a, how a lot of people see failure. It hurts. Mm -hmm. It's distasteful. It, uh, sometimes it seems like it's the end of your world. I've been there. I've, uh, before what I do now, I, I have uh, 20 businesses in Mexico. Okay. Before that, I had seven. I grew them from one to seven, and then I took another one, and I grew that from one to 20. And along the way, well, you have some failure. And uh, now I view failure, if you can call it failure. I see it as, I call it golden opportunities. Believe it or not, when we face obstacles or tribulations, or failures, or anything that can come our way. Those are the opportunities that I view as gold. These are the opportunities, opportunities, if you could see it as such, that will really bring out the best in you, that will really bring to the surface those areas in your life that have the power to drag you down. The letter K in my book is kryptonite. Okay. We've heard about uh, Superman and how he can fly and how he can, you know, with his eyes, the lasers, and yeah. so on and so forth. And we all think, wow, Superman, invincible. But he has one... The kryptonite. Yeah, kryptonite. And so we all have kryptonite in our lives and it comes in different shapes and forms the quicker we learn to identify what that kryptonite is in our lives the quicker we can deal with it and the less harm it will have upon us are you more referring to kryptonite of like internal traumas and, and baggage of the past or you mean more like the hedonistic pursuits of people and, and distractions of the world it can be a lot of things it can be bad habits it can be um, emotional hang-ups from, uh, you know, when we're bullied, when we're kids. Mm -hmm. uh, it can be a lot of different things. It can be um, even perspectives, how we view life. Uh, there's a parable about a fly in a beautiful jar of perfume. And the owner of the perfume says, it's spoiled, it's no good anymore because this fly is in the jar of perfume. Well, I don't know how much uh, a little fly can affect the smell, a, big, yeah. <laughs> of a big jar of perfume. If you close your eyes, you no longer see the fly. You just smell the perfume. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we just need to close our eyes to smell the perfume. And when you close your eyes and you realize you can breathe and you realize you have good health and you realize you have two good legs and you have a brain and, and you have friends and you have family that support you. And all of a sudden you turn and you look around you and you see life from a different perspective. And whatever failure or whatever obstacle or whatever is coming your way, you see it as an opportunity to get to know more about yourself. And, and now all of a sudden you see all those things that are holding you down, you get rid of those. And now all of a sudden, just like gold in the refining process, it comes out shinier and more useful mm -hmm. and beautiful, or a diamond as well. You know, pressure and heat and all of a sudden coal becomes a diamond. And, and it's true with us as well. Now, I know that uh, we don't like hardship. I would rather learn from other people's experiences. Mm -hmm. And that's what this book is about. And what being able to, if you can, if at all possible, uh, acquaint yourself with people that have already traversed the way, that have already walked mm -hmm. that path, fathers, 
older businessmen, learn from them, acquire knowledge from them, because it's easier and, and way better to learn the lessons from oh, other people than to learn them. Do you feel that um, in person? if someone is to read a book, and as you did in your earlier years, a lot of self-help books, and you're acquiring the messages and, and somebody else's um, beliefs and the lessons they learn through their life, do you not sometimes feel that just through reading it and not feeling the the loss or the lesson that it's harder to relate to it and therefore apply it? Well, the... The H in my book is habits. Okay. A lot of people think that the you know we need to create habits in order to succeed. And my view of habits is a little bit different. Um, I say that when we talk about habits, it's mostly bad habits per se. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like. Bad habit, maybe smoking or drinking too much or gambling. Those are bad habits. When when I talk about good habits, I like to talk to them about. I like to refer to them as rituals. Rituals denotes or has the connotation of something more spiritual. When we take something such as exercise. And it's no longer just a good habit, but a ritual. Mm -hmm. Then it's going to be more a part of us. And we're going to involve God more into that ritual. For example, exercise. We, we all know we need to exercise. Yeah. Right? But when you start understanding that it's not just about getting buff, you know, and, and, uh, or being healthy, which is good. It, there's nothing wrong with that. But when you realize that this is your avatar, this is the only body you get in this lifetime. You don't get another one. Mm -hmm. You only get one. And you have to take care of it because this is what's going to get you around in life. Yeah, right? right? So you got to make sure that it's in good shape. You but know, more than anything, if you see it as a temple of God, like you know, a lot of people say that this is where God chooses to dwell, then the ritual of taking care of this body it's more like when the high priest would take care of the temple. They had a, a devotion to making sure that the temple was always clean, that nothing bad would ever enter into the temple, that there was always the candles lit inside the temple. The, the candles could be maybe the inspiration in here, like we were talking the right light. now about the light. Mm -hmm. If there's light inside of us, no matter the darkness... No matter what is happening outside, in our circumstances, the joy from within us can outwit anything that can be happening outside. Mm -hmm. And the true joy from within, that's what's going to overcome the darkness, that light from within. Yeah. I was going to say that um, what, you, what you've just explained so I'm a Muslim, and in our faith we have a similar concept of what you described, which is obviously there's worship, and that's the religious aspect, but there's also many forms of worship, and you are actually rewarded for, for example, exercise is considered an act of worship, or okay. spending time with your, your wife and your children is actually considered an act of worship, and what I'm gathering from, from that is, uh, from the book Atomic Habits, he's, he's very implementing the fact of don't rise to your level of motivation because motivation comes and goes. Rather fall back on your habits and systems and the better habits and systems you have in place, the more in line you are with your goal as opposed to a fleeting uh, motivation vessel. Um, but what I'm, I'm understanding from you is rather than putting a binary like that, it's rather add meaning to your, to your rituals and habits because the more meaning you have, the more adherence you likely have. That's beautiful. I like what you just said. And when I view, when I started viewing my life as a ritual, for example, eating became a ritual. It no longer was just, I'm hungry, I need to feed myself. It became a moment where I was able to meet with my father and really thank him, really thank him for the food and really thank him for the quality of the food that I was, I was feeding this avatar, this body, mm -hmm. and thanking him for 
everything that he's done for me in, in life and and just a moment of of fellowship with him it wasn't anymore just i'm going to grab a quick bite to eat when i was younger i studied medicine i did three years in medical school okay and it was a lot of fun i loved medical school uh, as a matter of fact sometime in the future maybe if i have uh uh, the opportunity I'll continue and I'll finish my my uh, medical school. But we had this uh, hectic life from when we started, you know, mm -hmm. six in the morning to 10 o'clock at night. We we're running from class to class to surgeries to right. reading, and it was very hectic. So we didn't have a lot of time to eat. So we would, whatever was available, we'd just pick it up along the way and we'd. Sometimes we'd be dissecting a cadaver and we'd be eating, and that's uh, that's no way to. Yeah, that's no, no I way completely to relate. relate. I did six <laughs> years of I did six years of dental school, and it, yes, it's, it's a it's a you tough relate. degree. Exactly, yes. What I'm noticing also. Nice smile, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> I can tell. Uh, what I'm noticing in in your uh, in between the lines um, is you are very you connect the dots of things. Uh, and therefore, it's a form of presence. But I'm I'm noticing your very in belief of let's say the domino effect, or as you mentioned, the watch kind of led to to this uh, situation. Now, I'm also a proponent of um, a childhood makes a person, especially in the younger years, where what we face as childhood it can it shapes us as a person and how the perspective we have of life and and everything. And obviously, as life goes on, you you try and navigate that better. What was it like? Um, you mentioned you lost your father at a young age, and and also your mother. And may God rest both their souls. How was it like, you know, in your younger years navigating life without a father figure and and that young young age loss? The other day, I met a a young man. I was drinking a cup of coffee here in Dubai. We were staying up at a the I think it's the Princess Towers, the yeah. highest residence tower here in Dubai mm -hmm. and we were somewhere up high like the 80th floor something crazy you see the clouds and it was early in the morning I was having my devotion and drinking my cup of coffee and all of a sudden I see this string this uh, rope okay yes yes of and it began to dangle and I was curious and out of the corner of my eye I see this balloon this yellow balloon bobbing mm -hmm. up and down and I was like wow a balloon at this yeah. Right. And then all of a sudden this young man's face comes up and I was like, well, hello, good morning to you. <laughs> <laughs> and he was one of those window cleaners. Yeah. And uh, I big smile, friendliest smile I've ever seen. So I offered him a cup of coffee. He says, yes. So I go inside. I make him a cup of coffee. I bring it to him. He's hanging. Oh, the, the window cleaner. The window oh, cleaner. Okay. Wow, wow, on the 80th floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he's still hanging. Right. From the rope. And he's drinking the coffee and we're talking. And I asked him about his life and where he was from. He said he was from Nigeria. And he, and, uh, he was telling me a, a little bit about his story. I could relate. He said that he left Nigeria to come to Dubai to work to support his family back home, his brothers and sisters and his mom. Mm -hmm. Every day he's risking his life at that height, cleaning windows to feed his family. And that really touched my heart. At that point, I said, he's my hero. This is somebody, he may not know it, but he's inspiring me. All right. He's risking his life to feed his family. And I began to share with him. He, he saw me. He, I don't know. He told me later that he, he was looking at me. He saw you know, a businessman, somebody who had maybe had some success in life. But little did he know that I was looking at him. And I was, I was in awe by his persona. And, you know, you ask me about my childhood, and a lot of people have had tough childhoods. I know very few people that have had wonderful childhoods, and those are good as well. But what I learned along the way 
was that a lot of what happens in our childhood, good or bad, the bad things tend to shape us and make us who we are today if we learn to later appreciate those things and learn to grow from those experiences. Don't get bogged down by those bad experiences. Take the good, learn from the good, learn from the bad, take the bad, learn from the bad. But don't be defined. We're not defined by those circumstances. Like they say, you take a millionaire and uh, take everything away from him and put him in the middle of a city somewhere. And in yeah. a few years, he'll be back. come back and, and he'll be a millionaire again. A millionaire isn't defined by how many zeros he has in his bank account. He's defined by who he sees himself as or what he believes in. And all of a sudden, you, you put him in a different circumstance and he'll become a yeah. millionaire again. What I've seen that condensed down to what you just explained is everybody can fall back onto their skills uh, limiting beliefs or beliefs and traits where you can have the traits of a disciplined person and so forth you can have the skills of um, fi um, financial you, you know you have to you know how to make money and then you have your beliefs of can I do this uh, so if you put someone in a position where they're back to square one um, he still has these three things and therefore you should be able to to get back without the leverages of the things he lost um, I wanted to understand a little bit more um, You've gone through a lot of hardship and uh, I can see that and I can see certain things really affect you um, because of how much meaning you put into everything. Has it always been everything of when you were younger, this intentional and um, I can see now you live your life with a very orientated around gratitude. Um, what caused that, caused that shift in your mind? When I realized how, how quick life goes by, I don't know if it's happened to you, but you look back and all of your life is maybe 10 quick memories. And you realize that you're no longer that 10 year old boy playing soccer. Yeah. And you look at your life and you're like, where did it all go? And you have some great experiences. My wife and I, we've traveled all over the world. We, we know basically, we've seen the seven wonders of the world. We've been to uh, Brazil, China, Egypt, Israel. We've even been to Iceland. Huh. It's very cold in Iceland. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've been to Japan, just all over the place. And we have many wonderful memories. We've had our ups and downs, like any marriage does. We're about to celebrate our wedding anniversary. And when I said I had a near life and death experience, mm -hmm. you, you realize that you're here today, today. You may not be here tomorrow. Maybe a something like an insect bite, and you're gone. Mm -hmm. You know, or you choke on a yeah, peanut or something. <laughs> do you do you think about death a lot and and your own mortality? Mm, I understand that we all have a, an expiration date. Some people will get to be a hundred. Some people will get to be fifty. We all have an expiration date. What I feel more than anything is a heavy responsibility to, to help, to transcend, to be able to help the little me's that are still running around out there mm -hmm. um, so that they, when they grow up, they can have a, a great life like I've had a great life without having to uh, bump themselves so hard along the way. If they have the 
instruments with which they can, at a younger age, have more of an advantage, then they will have a greater life and they will be able to help more people sooner and their life will have more fruit sooner as a consequence. You take a seed and you plant it and it gives a tree that gives fruit and the fruits give more seed and you can eat the fruit, share the fruit, sell the fruit, plant the seed, you have more trees before you need to know it, you need more ground mm -hmm. because your trees are duplicating themselves and all of a sudden you no, no longer just have orange trees, you have apple trees, you have grapefruits, tomatoes. And so all of a sudden you have all this that you can offer the world. And it just starts with one seed. Right. So we all have one gift. Write a song. Write a poem. Paint that painting. Mm -hmm. Take that picture. I don't know if you've ever seen that uh, famous picture of, uh, I think it was this Indian girl with bright blue eyes, very, yes, very famous. Yes, yeah. Somebody took that paint picture, mm -hmm. you know? Um, or you go to these beautiful museums and you see a, a Monet or a Van Gogh. They did that. They didn't really understand that their paintings were going to affect so many people. Yeah centuries later or or you hear a song and the guy that wrote the song he didn't really think he was going to inspire millions of people as a consequence or the lady that wrote uh, the harry potter books mm -hmm. you know she was 50 something and i think she had just uh become unemployed or something yeah like she was that. broke and, and became yeah, successful very late in life yeah. or the guy that started ali baba ali baba yeah they, they didn't think he was good enough, I think, to work at a Kentucky Fried Chicken or something like that. No, he's one so, of the wealthiest in China. Yeah. yeah. And, and when he went to go apply for a job, they said, no, no you're, you don't have what it takes. Mm -hmm. So now here, <laughs> you know, and that helped him to say, well, okay. And, and he used his brain to do something else. Mm -hmm. So you never know. And, and you got to start small. Most people start small. You look at uh, Bill Gates, you know, in the garage, yeah. or, or um, um, Steve Jobs. Uh, a lot of these people start small, and and before you know it, you're being a blessing to millions upon mm -hmm. millions of people. Where did where did your start small begin? You mentioned you had you grew from one to seven. What was that first one? Well, when I was um, when I w I was born in Mexico. And I grew up in the United States. I studied there. And I made a lot of money for a lot of people. And I said, you know, it's my turn. Okay. So I looked around and I saw Mexico as a good opportunity. Um, overhead, you know, the business is there. The, the rent for the buildings are, is very low. Overhead's very low. So I went to Mexico and I, I bought a small business. And... You wouldn't believe how hard it was to believe that from one business I could grow to two. It was like the craziest thing. It was like, nah, this will never happen. But then all of a sudden, you open one, and then all of a sudden, you open two. Mm -hmm. And before you knew it, I was opening three, four, five, six, and seven without even being a part of it. I had a, a young man that I would tell him, go check out this this place, and if you like it, rent it and make it happen. And the same with this other business with uh, the 20 locations that we have right now in, in Mexico. You wouldn't believe it, but I, I, most of those places we've never been to. Well, and, uh, is it this all in the diamond, uh, diamond sphere? No, that's in the spa industry. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, we have some spas, spas in okay. Mexico. That's where you began in the spas. Yeah. Okay. Very interesting. Uh -huh. And so... Um, when, when you start applying a lot of these um, ideas, these concepts, like uh, 
a lot of these um, habits becoming rituals and mm -hmm. and seeing that time is a very valuable resource and and understanding that you have to clone yourself and you have to delegate because you can only do so much in one day but for example when we were doing one spa well it was just us with eight people you know helping eight customers a day but now we're 20 spas and we can help 200 people a day you know and in direct proportion direct ratio with how many people we help mm -hmm. on a daily basis well that's how successful we are you know there's a there's a quote from a guy called alex homozi and it's about confidence and he's talking about uh, confidence doesn't come from shouting affirmations in the mirror it comes from having a stack of undeniable evidence that you are who you say you are so that kind of means that the more you show up to yourself, the more you are a man of your word and so forth, you're building up evidences in your mind, you're increasing your um, self-belief. And, and you mentioned that you started with one location, you couldn't visualize or see, you had a bit of a blocker on how am I gonna expand this, how other locations or other businesses. How did you overcome that limiting belief you had? It, it was a challenge. It was a challenge, uh, believe it or not, um, and it was also uh, having read a book and the sense of urgency you would be surprised how if for example let's suppose you had to raise I don't know $10,000 if you say oh, I just want to raise uh, $10,000 from here to a year. Well, you take your time and in a year, you raise $10,000. But if all of a sudden, for example, there was an emergency and you needed $10,000 today, you would do it mm -hmm. today. So you, you apply a sense of urgency <coughs> and before you know it, you make things happen. So it's, it's one of those things that if... If you incorporate it into your life, you can get a lot. A lot you know, there's, of a, there's a there's a joke that goes around where it's like um, uh, a what's it called a drug addict. He'll always find a way to pay for his drugs, and even if he's homeless, <laughs> whatever he he finds a way because he's desperate. Right. Um, and it kind of goes on to say, you know, so find your why or find your reason to, to get out of your situation. Um, and I, I like the concept of. Um, some people are driven by motivation towards a goal. I, I want to achieve something or I want to provide for my family and, and that's an aspirational endeavor. But a lot of people are also driven by fear that they're running away from something. Um, they have fear of, you know, for their family situation or they have some, some demons they're working or they're running away from or just, you know, trauma. They're going through a breakup and, and they're using that, that pain as, as a fuel source. In your life, has it been more through aspiration towards a goal or running away from something that has driven you through tough moments? I think it's been goal oriented. I, I always tell this story and uh, G in my book is uh, goals. Okay. Goals are very important because if you don't know where you're going, how will you know when you got there or how will you know which direction to take? So you definitely need to set goals in your life, very specific goals. I heard a story about a man that wanted to climb Mount Everest. And he started taking actions towards it. So he goes and he climbed Mount Everest. But he never came down. He died in the process. But he climbed to Mount Everest. Mm -hmm. And then there was another man that said, okay, I learned from that. I want to climb Mount Everest. Come back down. And come back down. Yeah. And he did that. He climbed Mount Everest and he came down, but he was missing a few fingers due to his uh, frostbite. frostbite yeah. The third man says, okay, I learned from that. <laughs> now I want to climb Mount Everest, come back down in one piece, and he mm -hmm. did that. So it's very, very good to be very specific about what it is that you want to achieve in life. And you'd be surprised if you write it down, and uh, I encourage your audience to do this, Write it down, have a journal, write it down. Say, I, Vladimir, will accomplish this. This is what I want to see happen within this year. Mm -hmm. This is what I'd like to see take place in my life. 
And you start writing these things down. And before you know it, l- later on in the years, you, you go back and you read it, mm-hmm. and it's there. You mentioned that um, you know the real the real victory in the pursuit of a goal is not the end goal, it's actually who you become yes. in that process. So when you are writing your goals down, are you more looking towards metrics of achievement of maybe a financial goal or so forth? Or more is it more like, I want to be a person who is more patient, more accepting? Is it characteristics or uh, objectives? You know, um, having had a brush with death, I now realize that even though I set goals for the future, maybe I won't be alive mm-hmm. to have achieved them. So does that mean that I don't set goals? No, I set goals. I, I set high and lofty goals. However, to me, what I've realized is that when you're not so caught up with the goals but you're more caught up in who you're becoming in the process and who you're meeting. Mm-hmm. For example, me having met you has been wonderful for me. It's a great gift to me. Uh, the other day I was at the airport waiting for my wife's grandmother to show up at the airport. And this uh, gentleman in an Arabian uh, garb comes up and he says, may I sit here? And he says, I said, sure, sit down. We started chatting, and I was sharing with him about my book. And uh, I asked him what he does. It turns out he's a, he's a general. Wow. And we started talking, and it was just amazing to, to have met his acquaintance, you know. Just incredible people that, that you meet along the way. And uh, like I said the other day, I, you know, just two days ago, I was in a Zoom call with a prince, Ask me when I thought that was ever yeah. going to happen. You know, it's just you know. so it's who you meet in the process. You never know, and who you become in the process, and how you live that day. Every single day, believe me, because of COVID, because of what I I went through. Every single breath that I take, I know it might sound corny or you know whatever but i'm telling you the truth every single breath that i breathe is is a gift from god i i receive it with humility and i thank him for it i'm grateful because Mm -hmm. when you can't breathe when you're there and you're struggling for every single breath And you don't know how much longer, maybe five minutes that you have a life or 10 minutes you have a life. Believe me, once now you have health and and you can go out and enjoy your day and enjoy your wife, enjoy your friends and enjoy what you do. Mm -hmm. Those goals that you set for the future, they're nice. But what's even better is your, your today, how you lived today. And that's what's truly... That's yeah. where the magic is. You know, I, I came across a video, and it, uh, it's especially for people my age, we're all very caught up in pursuit of financial goal. The uh, carrot. Uh, the carrots at the end <laughs> of the stick, yes. Um, so the gentleman was explaining that if someone offered you $10 million tomorrow, but you would lose your health, you would die the next day, would you take it? You wouldn't. Okay, so health is above money. He said, if you... We were given $10 million, but you could not speak to your mom again. Would you take it? No. So you put relationships above. And he went through a list of things of, would you exchange $10 million, but you'd have to give up something. Five, five six different things. And, and it concluded that, okay, well, your health is above, your relationships are above, your spirituality is above. There's so many things above uh, financial pursuits. Um, but piling off that, I'm, I'm very interested because now I'm seeing that you are involved in multiple industries from the diamond to the spas to brokering deals. Um, what does a day-to-day look like for you? Uh, from when I wake up, mm-hmm. I wake up maybe at about five, six in the morning and I spend a few hours in my morning devotion, drink my cup of coffee. I, I talk to God. We talk. He's my friend. He's my father. He's not just this 
untouchable force. He's a real person to me. We talk. He corrects me. He challenges me. He reassures me. He shows me the way. He tells me which way to go, what to avoid, what to work on. Then I spend some time with my wife. When she wakes up, then we we work. Um, here in Dubai, I'm in the middle of uh, selling some buildings. We're selling some buildings, uh, some plots of land. Um, I help her. She's in real estate. She's also in finances, Wall Street. So I... I I'm, you know, I, I started dabbling in Wall Street just because I wanted to, to be help. able to understand her world a little bit more. So we, uh, we talk about, you know, the stocks and where the world is going and so on. Uh, I go to the gym. I see working out as a, a ritual. And um, let's see, we enjoy eating out. Uh, doing good for other people. I spend a lot of time um, talking to people. I meet people every day, just sitting in the lobby or at the airport. I've learned the power of just saying hello to someone and, you know, complimenting them or or just uh, nice weather we're having. And yeah. all of a sudden, like with you, we just had a very pleasant conversation that led to this. Yeah that will lead to maybe what I have to share. Maybe we'll help one person out there that can, uh, you know, help them with what I can have to offer mm -hmm. and they can have a little bit more uh, chance of succeeding in what they're doing. And so you never really know who you meet along the, along the way. You know, um, when I was younger, I was a very shy person and my dad would... Um he realized I'm a bit introverted and he would, he would test me like, um, in a supermarket, he'll say, Hey, go ask the, the person in the supermarket, where is the bread? And I'd have such, I can't ask where the bread, I just have this anxiety and I've grown up like that in, in, in my younger years. And now I feel like I'm a very outgoing and actually maybe extroverted person. And that's been through exposure. Uh, you know, I developed and developed that skill, but something that I've really learned specifically coming to Dubai is, never say no like i i always i'd even say half of my time um, apart from my work is actually meeting people almost every day like yourself i'll always meet someone and a lot of the time it can be a waste of time where okay maybe not doesn't lead to anything specific um, but apart from that you, the conversation can be something meaningful but now looking back in, in the short amount of time i've been here just when I think, okay, this opportunity that I have with this specific person, it came because I met this person, he referred me and that conversation and, and you know, connecting the dots. Um, so like yourself, I, I do like to be very intentional and never say no to an opportunity because you never know what kind of an impact someone can have in your life. And now as this conversation is going on, I'm, I'm really moved by a lot of the things you're saying because, okay, we had a brief conversation and I didn't have any expectation of how this would turn out, but I can see you have a lot of things to offer and I'm sitting here learning and, and oh. um, really, really enjoying it. I'm learning a lot from you, and I appreciate this opportunity. In, in my book, now that you mentioned that the why is for yes, like you okay. said, never say no. You'd be surprised how many things will come to pass when you say yes to life mm -hmm. and you get to meet people and and go to places like when my wife said, let's go to Iceland because there's a, I think called Blue Lagoon. Yes, yes. And I was like, I hate the cold. <laughs> I hate the cold. But I said, all right, let's go. You want to go to the Blue Lagoon? Let's go to the Blue Lagoon. And we went and it was an exceptional, I was just a phenomenal experience. Or when she said, you know, let's go, um, where was it that she wanted to go? She wanted to go to Bali, and I had never heard about Bali, you know. And I said, all right, well, let's go to Bali. So we went to Bali, and it was wonderful. I really enjoyed Bali. And just like that, being able to, to open yourself up to new ideas and new concepts and new perspectives mm -hmm. and new ways of thinking and uh, 
getting to meet new people and and new experiences in life and you'll you'll be amazed at how much you'll learn as an individual and like I was sharing with you in the process of chasing that carrot you you meet wonderful people that then you will take these layers from your life mm -hmm. and the true you will come out like you said you were introverted when you were a child and you were challenged to to break free from that and look at you now you're being able to influence millions of people with your gift who would have known mm -hmm. and so now as a consequence of your gift of of being able to meet people along the way and uh, now you're being able to share uh, knowledge and and wealth to all these people that are going to be listening to you today and tomorrow and yeah. the years to come and that's the the fabulous things uh, the fabulous thing about uh, the gifts that are given to us they're never really ours mm -hmm. they're on loan they belong to him yes and he gives uh, these gifts to us on loan for us to benefit from them but also so that we can benefit others. And the more people we benefit, the more will be returned to us. It'll enrich our lives. Maybe, yes, in the matter of, uh, you know, physical wealth, but more than anything, enrich our lives yeah, spiritually, who we are as an individual and, and who we become along the way. So now you're... Um and a later stage in life where you've probably gone through the pursuit of money and, and business. And just in your answer of how you spend your day, I, I was actually expecting maybe a lot of meetings and a lot of working on the businesses, uh, but actually it was more about being present for your loved ones and, and, and working on your body and your mind and your spirituality. So now looking forward, um, what is success to you? What, what, what is a goal for you that you want to have? The... Right now, what I'm working on is getting this information to the leader of this country and maybe to some of the leaders of other countries to see if there's any way possible that they can incorporate it into the educational system. Okay. Because, like I said, it's a good thing to learn how to read and write and have a... a some cultural background history but i really believe that if these young children learn the abcs of success mm -hmm. they will have an edge in life and this world will become a better place because if at an early age they discover their gifts and they can share it or incorporate it into their lives and they can share it with as many people as possible at a younger age mm -hmm then more of their lives will be more successful, more productive, and more people will benefit from that. Are you a believer in the, the current way the education system is? Um, because a lot of people say that it's designed to create workers. And, and from a high level, from a governmental perspective, schooling is, you know, you, not everyone can be successful, not everyone can be financially free because then you need waiters, you need, uh, you need drivers and so forth. Um, so now looking back, and uh, for example, I look at my younger brother. He's he's in his last years of school, and he's burdened with so much stress of I have to do well in my exams, I have to do well, and I try and help him. I was home recently. I'm looking through the things he's learning, and I have remnant memory. I, I remember learning the same thing, um, but it's all just memorizing, and it's memorizing things that I to this day haven't used. And I know, for example, as soon as this exam is done, this no longer serves utility for him. I do like the idea of school, it, it builds traits, it, build, it teaches you how to learn, it teaches you how to study, it teaches you discipline. Um, but as, as I've gone through life, and I've been through all of the education, high level and then university and a degree and dentistry, and uh, I chose another route later on, but I, I do see the value in, in traditional education if you have a vocational route. If you are trying to be a doctor, okay, then use education to its full potential. Um, but someone like yourself who is more just pursuing success and what that means to you 
would you then be an ascriber of traditional education? You know, it's, I'm, I'm glad you asked that. My wife and I, we've been, we don't have any children in it, but we, we eventually will. And to us, that's, uh, that's a big question because we don't know in which country we'd mm-hmm. like for them to go to school at. But I think we've reached the conclusion that we'd like to be a big part of their education, maybe homeschooling them and mm-hmm. hiring the best tutors for them and incorporating other parts uh, into their, their education. For example, um, a lot of psychology, mm-hmm. you know, at a young age, how to, uh, how to read someone. It's so important. Yeah. Uh, the letter X in my book is X-ray. Okay. Being able to really see through things, uh, learning how to read somebody's posture, uh, looking into their eyes and knowing what they're thinking. Yeah. It's very important. You really never know somebody's true intentions, and that's important. Um, life can be full of uh, pitfalls, and you have to learn how to avoid those pitfalls. So that's important. Um, maybe how to carry themselves, you know, classes on poise and posture and customs and and uh, different uh, cultures and how they make business and how they do business. It's not the same to do business in Egypt. Uh, we were there at one of the most incredible bazaar and the way they do business there, it's <laughs> very unique to how they do business in China. Okay. And that's also a very unique experience. Or how they do business in, in Petra, the Bedouins. They do business. Uh, it's fascinating how they do business in, in uh, Petra. So, you know, a lot of these things that you can't learn in a typical school. Mm-hmm. I, I think that... Um, you know, yes, they're they're doing their best. I I don't know if if I can agree that their the education system is is just to create workers. I don't know. I I can't say. A lot of uh, you know great people come from the education That's system awesome. and they've learned a lot. And you know, doctors, lawyers, you know, it's necessary, but. If we can incorporate other elements, mm-hmm. I think uh, we can have uh, a better opportunity at a better uh, of having a better world. If we can uh, help children understand that it's not just about the carrot, it's not just about me benefiting from what I sold to you. It's not just about what I bought from you or sold to you today but the relationship that was established in the process. Do you think you wouldn't be the same person you are with the relationships you have around you? If, uh, if I had grown up with uh, this knowledge, I think uh, my life would have been, I think I would have uh, dedicated myself more to helping people more at a younger age. Okay. Um, and been maybe more successful, quote unquote, at a younger age. You mentioned the five uh, Fs yes. um, and the, the rituals around them. Is that how you would define success to you? Absolutely. Into those five? Yes, a uh, very well balanced system, which is again, the letter F stands for the five Fs, which is faith, your relationship with your Heavenly Father, fitness. Your body is the temple, so you got to keep it clean, watch what you eat, you know. Mm -hmm. If you want to get buff, get buff, but uh, do something. Do something every day, Mm -hmm. a little bit of exercise. Uh, It's your avatar. It's the only body you will ever get. You can't exchange it for another one. So establish the ritual of exercise, fitness, family, very important. Your wife, your children, don't ever put anything. You know, you hear the stories of the little kids that grew up without their father, and you're like, oh, he passed away. No, he just was never at home. 
Mm-hmm. You know, he, he was always working to give me a better life. Well, that's great. But I think uh, fathers, if they're more present in their children's day-to-day activities, they can have more of an inspiration and more of a motivation and more of an impact on their children's lives. And they, they then can turn out to be better parents. Mm-hmm. Um, finances, absolutely. And there's a way of um, balancing those finances. They say that 50% of what you make should be what you live off of. Okay. Only 50%. So, you know, you get your paycheck, take half of it, and that's what you get. That's what you live off of. Mm-hmm. And if it only uh, lets you have so much, well, then so be it. That's all you get. Mm-hmm. The other 50, you should get 20% and you should invest. A small business or, you know, make it work for you. Make the money work for you. And the other money is for savings. You should always save. And another part to helping your fellow Philanthropy. human being. You see somebody in need, well, you help them out, absolutely. And helping your fellow human being, that's the fifth F, philanthropy, uh, doesn't necessarily mean just poor people, okay? A lot of times you think, oh, it's just about taking my shoes off and giving it to the guy that doesn't have any shoes. Mm -hmm. That's good, do it. But it's also sometimes you see a very wealthy person that's sad, or, or somebody who's having a bad day or somebody who's down on his luck or, you know, whatever. It doesn't necessarily have to be somebody that's uh, homeless. It, it can be just the guy that happens to sit next to you in the metro and you just start talking to him. And sometimes even just one quick word will inspire him and lift his spirits and help him get through one more day. And that'll give him hope to, to carry on and, and to be inspired. And uh, it's not about how many times life knocks you down. It's about how many times you get back up and keep on right. punching like Rocky says. Yeah. <laughs> so the majority of the viewers are likely to be uh, young men. And as young men, we have a lot of pressures on ourselves of things we have to achieve. We have a lot of burdens, things to take care of and so forth. Um, And you have, I guess, 26 letters, so therefore 26 elements of success. But what would be a personal advice you would give to young men, something to focus on or something to consider? As quickly as possible. First of all, don't neglect the relationship with God. That's the most important. Like they say, what, what's the use of being the richest guy in the cemetery? Right. Right? Yeah. If, or the richest guy that's home alone eating you know, soup because you have so many problems with your digestive system because of the, you know, the ulcers out of working so much and you have nobody to share your wealth with. Um, It's so easy to get distracted. It's so easy to get caught up. Um, You see these flashy cars or flashy clothes and and you think that's success. It's good. It's nice. Go for it if you can. Absolutely. Dress nice. Smell good. You know, take care of yourself. Buy that Lamborghini if you can. Get it. Absolutely. Why not? That big villa at Palm Jumeirah. Absolutely, go for it. You deserve it. You can have it. It's yours if you want it. But don't forget that the true success is who you become along the way. How many people you helped along the way. Who who you lifted up when they were down. That's the true success. Because this life, it comes and goes. It's very, very quick. And before you know it, it's almost over. And what's really going to make a difference is is your relationship with him, your relationship with yourself, and your relationship with your fellow human being. Wonderful. 
I can also see that yeah, a lot of your life is orientated around people and having meaningful interactions and trying to learn anything from from anyone, whatever level that may be, or just inspiration from a from a window worker, sorry cleaner. Uh, for young people who maybe haven't mastered the art of connecting with people or let's say networking, uh, what kind of advice would you give to them to have meaningful conversations, meaningful relationships beyond just surface level acquaintances? but actually you know, have these deeper connections? Well, when, when you start realizing what your gift is, it'll prompt you, it'll open the doors to getting to know people because you want to share it. It inspires you, it motivates you, it, it makes you passionate. And, and you'll start talking about it and you'll start, and that's how you'll meet people. You know, just like you, you met me, you know, and I met you. And uh, all of a sudden, because of these two elements forming hydrogen and oxygen, all of a sudden there's water. Mm -hmm. And there's water for a lot of people to quench their thirst. And so we're not alone in this world. And when you think that maybe just uh, you and what you have to offer is great, which it is, but all of a sudden, when you join forces with somebody else, right. you can do so much more. And so when you start realizing what your true talent is and what your true gift is, what you have to share with the world, and you start doing that, you'll start naturally meeting people and you'll come mm -hmm. out of your shell. And you'll be, because it's all about blessing another human being. Your gifts are meant to bless other people whether it's a poem, a book, a story, a movie, a podcast, a book, whatever it is, it's always meant to to bless another human being. So that's how you'll start making mm. uh, contact with other people. A word that has a lot of meaning to me or a very significant word to me is curiosity. And I'm, I'm a very nonconformist. I, I really don't like the word must and should. Why should something be like this? Why should I have to do this? Why does society say we must do this? I'm always curious. And actually a, a, a large reason of why I, we even started the podcast was curiosity. Um, because you never know who you're going to meet and what kind of conversations um, that will have and what that could potentially lead to. Lead to. And I've always been curious in my education. Um, I did a very traditional education route, but curiosity led me into the path I ended up on. Uh, and I'm always, when I'm meeting someone, I always lead with curiosity. Uh, and therefore, a very defining word for me is curiosity because that's how I like to live my life. What would be an equivalent for yourself? Uh, a word that is very meaningful to yourself. You know, that's interesting. Um, living in an era where we have so much access to so much information, and now with AI mm -hmm. being such a part of our day-to-day -day and our reality, N nothing is a mystery anymore. In a matter of a second, we can have the answer to any question. Yeah. Uh, the letter Q in my book is question. Okay. Curiosity, question. Question everything. Question anything. Uh, and you'll be surprised. Uh, like, for example, where, where are you from? You know, where, where's that outfit from? A lot of my, uh, the people I get to know every day comes from them asking me where, you know, this outfit is from. I, I've i learned to wear this. I, I love it. It's uh, from Morocco. And to me, it's yeah. very comfortable. This is what I wear almost every day. Uh, this is a traditional garment from Morocco. And it's like, going to work in pajamas <laughs> and here all of a sudden people come up to me and they say oh that's a great outfit where is it from and they question and all of a sudden the conversation is is birthed and so again um yes absolutely question 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 uh, where are you from uh, where's your accent from um how's your life how are you doing today and you'll never know like you said, who you meet and, and what you learn. And don't ever stay with the doubt. I, we have no excuse. Uh, we can look it up and 
all of a sudden it's an interesting tidbit of information that you can share with somebody and that leads to more conversation and and something that AI will never have over us and that's that human contact, that human touch yeah. that we can, you can go to chat GPT and have a conversation with a robot but it's never going to replace this. Mm -hmm. The human contact, the heart to heart. Yeah. When, um, have you actually finished writing the book? Yes. Ah, so is it actually published and, and people can go in and find it? Yes, it's, uh, uh, I'll leave you all the details. Sure. If you have uh, some of your... So the name was The ABCs of Success. It's Success as Easy as ABC. Okay. Okay. So they can reach me at uh, success, easy as ABC at gmail.com. Okay. They can send their requirement, uh, the hello, and I'll send them all the details about how they can get their hands I'll, on I'll the be book. sure to post everything in, in, in the video description. Uh -huh. What is, uh, as a final point, what is your hopes and aspirations with the legacy you're trying to create and, and, and maybe a movement with the book you have written? Well, like I said, um, first and foremost... I'd like to get this into the hands of uh, leaders that can implement it into the educational system. And I really would like to see it impact uh, the less fortunate. Uh, to me, the children in Mexico that are running around without shoes and uh, other countries where there's a lot of poverty, I would really love to get this into their hands so that they can have an opportunity. A lot of these kids will never have an opportunity to be successful. They, they have a limit, as it is now, they can barely go to school, you know? And so now if they can get on the internet and, and go and find my book, I'll make it free to them so that they can just get it and they can learn it. And if they memorize it and they apply it, they will be successful. I know that they will. Because these are the same principles that have made other people very su successful in their lives. Wonderful. And I'm sure you will have, have that impact on the world. And it's a very strong and powerful message you're trying to leave on the world because it's, it's through your, not only your life experiences, but you, you have an idealistic view of how the world should be, how, how people should live. And I think that's guided through your spirituality and faith. Um, and you know the intention is always the the main thing behind something. So I'm, I'm actually very excited um, to see how things progress and also how this this relationship develops. Because I had, as I said, no expectation of how this would turn out. But I think it's one of, definitely one of the best episodes that I've enjoyed doing. Thank you so much. I'm very very humbled to hear that. Uh, the next podcast, if possible, uh, I'd like to share about another book that I'll be working on. And it's called, There Once Was a Man Named Fred. Okay. And I'm, it was inspired, I wanted it to be the shortest book ever written. Okay. And it's, it's just that. There once was a man named Fred. And then he was gone. And I wanted it to leave this sense of, wow, me too one day. What have I done with my life? What can I do with my life? If I have an opportunity to know that I have, a, let's say, a year left, what would I like to see happen with what I have to offer? What do I have to offer? So along with that, there comes a series of questions that really challenge you to look deep into your soul. Very, very thought-provoking questions that are only for you, that you can share with your loved ones or your wife, or, but they're meant mostly for the individual that will really challenge them to get to know what's inside, who they are, what they, what they want to do with their lives. So that's, uh, that's my next project. So it shouldn't take you too long, long to write that one if, if the goal is to be the shortest <laughs> one. So I'm sure well, maybe even in the description we can leave we can leave both. But Vladimir, it's been an absolute honor actually to to share this platform with you and have a very insightful discussion. And off camera, I have some things I want to mention of 
uh, the the goals you have, uh, um, I'm sure we can we can put a strong message out there. So I look forward to it. Well, but thank you, thank you very much for being gracious with your time and coming on today. Thank you, thank you for the invitation. Thank you for this opportunity, and I am very humbled and I'm grateful to have made your acquaintance. And I know that I'm going to learn a lot from you and be very blessed by your friendship. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you.